Good evening and welcome to the Royal Opera House Claw Studio Insight event sponsored by Rolex. I'm Natalie Harrison and tonight we're going to be looking behind the scenes of The Sleeping Beauty. The Sleeping Beauty holds a really dear place in the Royal Ballet's heart. It was the production that opened the Opera House after the Second World War in 1946. In 2006, the original staging was revived and it's been thrilling audiences ever since. Frederick Ashton famously described the pure classicism of Marius Petipa's 19th century ballet as a private lesson in the atmospheric art and craft of choreography. Tchaikovsky's ravishing music and Messel's sumptuous designs create a world of beauty and wonder. But as with anything truly elegant and effortless, there's actually a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes. And this evening, that's what we're going to have a glimpse of. Tonight, we'll be watching dancers of the Royal Ballet rehearse excerpts from the, Royal, from the Sleeping Beauty. But first, to introduce the ballet, I'm delighted to welcome the rehearsal director and principal character artist of the Royal Ballet, Christopher Saunders. Good evening, Chris. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Chris, you're rehearsal director. Can you explain to our audience what that entails? Uh, rehearsal director is really um, a glorified ballet master. Um, with Sleeping Beauty, I'm not in sole charge of. Some ballets I am in sole charge of, like Alice in Wonderland mm. and Manon, Myling. So I rehearse the Bluebirds, um, Prince, Princess Aurora, and also the Floriston. It's a big production it's in many huge parts. Production. So, yeah. yeah, huge <laughs> production. So I take a, not a sidestep, but I'm, I'm not a, in charge of the whole thing. But as rehearsal director, I'm there if anyone needs me for anything else or if someone's ill, unable to get in, I'll take the Cavaliers or I can sort of stand in and just be a... And I have to say, Christopher's just hands. celebrated 40 decades with the Royal Ballet. So <laughs> in that time, the Sleeping Beauty has popped up a bit. 40 years, not 40 decades. I did. Does it feel like 40 decades? Wow. Well, 40 centuries. <laughs> Four decades, 40 years. So sorry, Chris. <laughs> but that gives you, you have an eye across the production, having seen many incarnations and dancers performing. Well, right? I guess I'm one of the few dance dancers. I mean, there's Elizabeth McGorin, but most probably the two of us are the only two that remember uh, Madam herself taking a rehearsal of The Sleeping Beauty. So to, and it was actually in, in the Devour studio here. And How special. Yeah, it's because this was, it was, it's her. You know, mm. she came in and every, when she came in, not just the dancers were excited. I mean, the, the whole, the staff, the principals, everyone was, oh, it's madam. Yes. You know, it just, she just had that sort of aura about her. And what do you enjoy most rehearsing this ballet? Um, I think it's, the challenge is it's pure classical ballet. And, but on top of that, you don't want it to look like um, an academic sort of school class mm. ballet sort of step in the, in the studio. Yeah. You don't want them to look like students. You want them to have that incredible technique, but then to be able to, as professionals, put on top the artistry, the slight storytelling of you know, the characters and the fairy tales. And it's interesting that, because you can sort of Google any of these roles and there's a hundred solos to watch, but you're getting dancers to tell a whole you know, three or four act story and carry that narrative and paint the picture. So it's not just the technical feats, it's the whole, the whole picture, isn't it? It is, and it's not that it's full-on drama. It's um, through the pure classic dance you are able to tell a mm. fairy tale. And there's no hiding. This is real classical technique to... There isn't, that's the frightening thing. But <laughs> really, I think, as a professional dancer, you are terrified of, is there is no hiding. You can't fall off the point and be dramatic and go, oh, because you can't. That's not what it's about. And quite literally, they're in tutus a lot of the female roles as well, they aren't are. they? So they the are. turnout, the execution of footwork, that's they all are. really exposed and they detailed. Are. And because we have moved on, you know, 2023, technique has become so incredible the world over with ballet companies, but it's not making that the main focus. We don't want the audience to focus on the technique. Mm. We want them to sit back and see a story being told. Yes. So it's allowing that to tell the story. 
Can you introduce the first piece that we're going to see rehearsed? And can you let the audience know anything they should be looking out for? Well, we're, I'm, going to, we're, I'm going to rehearse the Bluebird Pas de Deux. Um, there is a very, very loose story. Um, it's, well, it's so loose it can almost fall off and disappear. It's, we're not telling a story in the Pas de Deux, but very loosely, you have Pl Princess Florine and the Bluebird. Now, you can Google the, the fairy tale. We're not telling that fairy tale. Tiny little snippet that she would like to fly, and the bluebird tries to teach her to fly. So in the pas de deux, you will see her have arm movements where she might be going. That's not because she's flying. It's because she can hear the bluebird singing, and here, in he comes, and he can fly, and she would like to fly away with him. And so she's trying to fly, and she can't fly. So there's a lot of instances where it looks as if she's going to fly, but no, she can't. It's the attempt. It's the attempt. Yeah. So it's a very loose story, but it allows the dancers to put a little layer on top of just doing the steps. Should we meet the dancers we have Absolutely. this evening? Um, please join me in welcoming Yufi Choi and Junyuk Jun. Good evening. Thank you both for joining us this evening. And I, I must add, they've all been performing over the weekend. Today was a company day off, so we're, <laughs> we're really grateful you could join us tonight. Um, June, you were about to debut in this part of Deux. Yeah. And Yuffie, you debuted uh, very early in your career. I remember your beautiful debut. Um, over the years, you must have accumulated so much sort of knowledge digging in and performing this role. Is it lovely now partnering with someone and watching him arrive? With you. It's always inspiring to dance with someone who's up and coming, which is June. <laughs> and um, yes, of, of course, I've been doing this role for quite a long time, but it's always been challenging, especially this time. It's been a three years since I did it, and uh, I had a baby. Um, and has your daughter watched you do this role ever before? Not yet. So um, we'll see if she likes it <laughs> or not. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. Well, June, how's the rehearsal process going? Or have you got going yet? Is this early yeah. day? Um, we had a couple of rehearsal with Yuffie twice. Um, and it's been great that she had amazing experience and telling, telling me how to really um, should do, <laughs> which is a lot of help. And um, that's great, yeah. Oh, I know. We look forward to seeing you. So Christopher is going to rehearse them. And we have um, Grant Green on piano. And we look forward to watching your rehearsal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so if we start with the part of the and we'll just do section by section, because this is your third rehearsal. And we have a few weeks to go until performances. So Grant, from the top, please. And... Just up there. Good, good, good. Very good. Very good. Uh, Miss Yuffie, when you take that first arabesque, can you believe that you're actually jumping off the top of a cliff and you're going to fly? Yes, and then you hear him. But we don't hear Jun because he has such a good jump and such a good plie. We don't hear him. Don't shake too much the hands. Just a little less. That's it. There we go. Now, uh, Jun, just the last pirouette down here. After, uh, can you make sure you try and stroke up that arm? You're in your, this isn't what it is, but in my head, if I was the bluebird, I'd be saying, this is your wing. This is what you need. So be very delicate with it. That's it. Now, do the promenade. Now, keep that distance all the way around and come right back to where you just started. A little further. Yes. If you stop here, yeah. what happens is, is, as you cross the front, 
you either go in and out to Miss Yuffie, and then you don't quite get in the right place here for her to let go. So it's literally a small amount, but finish down stage of where she is. Then you can do that. Yes, perfect. Then it's so easy for the lady. Yeah? Should we try once more? And really use the phrasing of the music. The first da, 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 his princess. Here, here comes. It's like a question and answer. Yep. Thanks, Grant. And. Yes, Miss Eve. Soften those arms, Jun. Yes. Soften the arms. And up. That's better. Good. Use the music breath. And show. Soften that side arm. Yes. Good. Excellent. OK, good, 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 good. That's all right. Take it easy today. Much better. Couple of times you have hard arms. Yes. Don't forget you're the bluebird. So when you breathe, it looks lovely. But when they go out straight, it just hardens it. Yeah. Should we do the next section? So Grant, can you just give us a little lead in? And breath. And go. Stop there. Good, very good, very good. Well done, well done. Um, Miss Yuffie, when you run up to the back and the first port de bras, keep, try not to be there for too long before Jun comes. So just sp space it musically that as you go up and then he can go, no, these are what you need, yes? So make sure as you do that, so if you take your arms up, make sure that, you stay there, that it looks as though your arms are going along that way. Okay. Don't let them come on the outside, yep. So you most probably have to do less gym. That's it, perfect. There you go. Now, the pirouette was lovely, except for one thing, which was a technicality. As we get around, let Miss Yuffie push. Try not to help by throwing her arms. Yes, if the lady pushes off of two hands equally, she will more than likely find her balance. No, he's helping. The man always wants to help, and so they go and try and throw the lady, and then it's unequal, because that goes against your push. So it feels awkward, but literally walk around and then just resist off of both. Then you can go in and paddle. And then when you do, just keep it down on this part of the tutu. Watch, it doesn't come up here. Okay. Yeah, just show me that again. Be ready to resist. Better. That's it. Keep those hands low. Good. There we go. Yeah. And then as quick as you can, yeah. run to get that jump on the music. Sure. <laughs> it's fast. No, you can go one, two, three. That's quite fast. It is. The trick yeah. is when Yuffie's there, and you're here. Already, you've got this hand on her, but she's in on fifth. So you're already, you leave that one there so that you can go, that's just to steady her. You don't have to just go boom. So that's there, but you're ready to step onto that right foot because you can hear that music going ja da dee dum. The quickest preparation you've done in your life. <laughs> and then don't worry that it's a crossed 
arabesque, and that's it. And allow the arm on the Grand Jeté Antoine to come up that way. That's it. Da, 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 da. I think you did one too many fouettes. Just do three. three. Three, out, straight away, plié, relevé. We were one, one behind, yes. I'll sing it and, should we hear it? Do you have, can you just play on the Alice Econ for us, Grant? And. Promenade. Pirouette. And close, and up, and round. Prepare and go. Ta, two, three, and D, da, D, and gallop high note. And off you, then you have time to come down, extend. That's it. Thanks, Grant. One, one behind. So if you can try and get that lift on that high note, it gives you enough time to walk without rushing and to come down. And then we don't have to have such a big pull out before the repeat of the beginning. Where should we go from? There? Let's, so let's just go back to this da da dee da musically, because I would like to see Jun's cabriole. <laughs> Ready, thank you. A uh, little lead in, thanks Grant. Good. Yes, good. And show. And up. There you go, John. Lovely. And breath. And out. Yes, Miss Yuffie. Lovely. Lift. OK, excellent. Very good. Just one small thing, Yuffie, when you're up there, watch the arms aren't here because this arm gets in the way of your face. So have them lower. Have them a little bit, yes. Monica said earlier on in the first part of the run to have them more over. And because you're pitched forward, it looks, it's a better line. Yep. Very good. So you can. Perfect. <laughs> Let her do her job. <laughs> Very good. Right, now let's go to the last section. Okay, Grant, just a lead in, be lovely, thank you. Thank you. And. Okay, just stop there, I'm gonna stop there. We were a little bit late. We were a little bit late. Now, I know dancers will say this is fast, but it's not, because if you look back at that video of Antoinette and Brian Shaw, it's quicker. Yes? We're taller, we might be taller. I think you're taller, John, than Brian Shaw. In fact, I know you are. But don't be late starting. Whereas when you first come out, you're on the back of the phrase, here you've got to be da, da, dee, jugga, dugga, dum. So you've got to be right on the front of it. Yep. And then that way, again, you've got question and answer and it'll work all the way through. If you can, and when it's fast, it's harder, turn, turn, literally fill your lungs with air. Yes, that's your moment, I can fly. Oh no, I can't. Yeah, there's the floor, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Okay, soon, Ajun. Dugga dugga dum. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Go! Yes, that's it, John. Turn, turn, breath. That's it. Go. Go, and breath. Go, John. Go. There we are, excellent. Now take your time, and good. Up, down, easy. And run, show, 
turn. Come in and give your hand. Take it, go. And four. Okay, pretty good, pretty good, very good. Now, your timing of your third one was spot on, it was perfect. Yes, yeah, second one was a little bit late, but when it's that quick, you both, and that's why we rehearse, is that there's no room for error. And like we said earlier on, you know, it's not that you can fall out dramatically because you've got the time, it's all really, You've got your amount of time, it's got to be done in there. Turn, turn, breath. It's got to go without looking rushed, because it doesn't want to look rushed. It's really tricky. So it's knowing what you've got to do and just doing only that, really. The first time what happened is you did the pirouette, you were a little bit slow going around. So this little transition, you got late. Whereas the second time you knew that, so you adjusted. Yeah. Can you just show me a multiple pirouette for the third one? Try to avoid paddling too soon. Miss Yuffie can turn like a top. Yeah. So just assist. That's better. It was good until the very last one. And what you need to do, I always think of it as making a pot. Nothing. <laughs> because if you're making a pot, and it's spinning around fast, and you've wet the clay, and you go, Dug! it's going to go. Yes. yes? So you have to be really careful. You don't really ever want to take your hands off of the waist. Yeah. Now, the waist isn't round. The waist has an oval shape. So you're constantly doing that. Yeah. And if you do paddle, make the equal. Okay. Just try one more time, because it started really well. See her tempo. Go with her, go with her, go with her. Better. That's better. So you're always feeling, the tips of your fingers are so sensitive, so you're always feeling contact. That way you're, you're gonna know where she is. Yeah, yeah. very good. Um, da, da, da. Can you hold back a fraction for him? Because you've gone, a la second, can I fly? Oh no, I can't. He's got to change and get you in his left arm and then get that. And I know when it's quick, so just give him a, a little bit of moment. Da 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 That's it. So Jun, as quickly as you can, get her waist to support her, and then you can do the arm together. Because it's lovely when that arm goes perfectly together. Yeah. And then the very end. So you've given your hand. Now, Miss Yuffie, he's going to cheat. He's not going to go, here's my hand. He's going to go, here's my hand. You're going to take it there. So from the audience point of view, we've got a triangle. That tri yes, that triangle will help you with your développer à la seconde. Yep, it feels odd, but it helps. That's it. Bom, bom. Now keep that triangle. Don't let that arm move. Join you're the bar, the wooden bar, apart from your right arm, just the left arm. <laughs> now both of you, when you let go, don't go, Argh! can you go, I can fly. I can fly. No, I can't, but I'll pretend. Just show me. Actually, do it with music. Let's go from here. Could you play the third pirouette? This is Jun. Miss you. Avery. Together. Better. Good. Together. And in you go, Jun. Triangle. Yes. Can she fly, Jun? Is she gonna fly? Let's see. And don't forget this is a wing that you're gonna let go of. That's it. That's better. <laughs> Very good, that's good, excellent. Very good. Very good, rehearsal number three. There we go. Yeah, how does that feel? Very nice, yeah. very good. Yeah. How many different partners over the years, Miss Yuffie? How many? How many? More Quite a, ten. More than 10 different bluebirds. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so now what I would love to see 
and I'm going to be cheeky. Can I see your coda step? Yeah. Perfect. Not you, Miss Yuffie, unless you wish to, but I'd love to see your brise volleys. Because just watching the arms, I want those arms for this coda step. And I would like you to place, the tricky thing is to do 12, not any less. You know what I'm like, Jun. 12, but don't do five and then do all the others on the place over there. So six, number six, an audience, you can look. Number six should be right on center, here. There's no mark, so you're, but you can see the camera, okay? So number six is right on center so that you can judge how far you need to go. Okay? So Grant, we're gonna do his code a step, please. Good. Left arm. Yes, that's it. Go on, John, four more. Yes, go on. That's it. There you go, excellent, very good. Very, very good. But, yes. <laughs> I'm always greedy. So much better. Yeah. If you could just get a little bit more reach on the forward to here, literally, yes? So that otherwise at the moment it's arms and they're very good, but if we can get, they shouldn't look the same. So the one going forward should have a real reach, almost like you're trying to touch your toe. Go on, reach. Re yeah. You know what? Lift your legs slightly higher to the front. <laughs> Just a little bit higher, that first leg. I'm greedy. Go on, now reach and touch it. Yes. So what we have is then a reach, and then the one going back, we get that a little bit like the beginning of your Bluebird solo, that Tom de Passant, we get that lovely shape. So we have a reach and a fly, and a reach and a fly, so that they're both different. Jump, jump, better. Yeah, that was a better one. Do you know why? Because your arms. You reached, and then this arm was softer, going up. Yeah. So much better. So much better, yeah. But if you can think of that in the next rehearsals, 12 of them. Yeah. yeah. I did a load last time. You did, I know. And you could feel me go, oh, Jun. <laughs> and a very nice, now, the pirouette was lovely. And I know there's that moment when Princess Florine comes on for her doubles. Someone's still going to be looking at you. So make sure if you do a pirouette like that, that you don't go, yes, and they're still watching you. Now you can do whatever you'd like here, but if you turn and face your back to the audience, still keep it going, that's it. Very good, very good. Well done, Miss Yuffie, thank you very much. Excellent, Jun, thank you, Grant, thank you. That was wonderful to watch. Um, we so appreciate them sharing the rehearsal space with us like that. Um, it was magnificent. Thank you both. We're going to say good night to Yuffie and Jun, but we have other dancers waiting in the wings. But um, for now, Chris, would you like to join me? Thank you. Thank you so much. Oops. Yeah. That was lovely to watch. What I love about your coaching is the comprehensive stitching together of enough storytelling, technique, musicality, and obviously you have Yuffie there, who's so inherently musical, and June, who's so coordinated, so, you know, it's... It's a lovely combination, because you have, yeah. yeah, Yuffie's experience of, well, the last 14 years, maybe, or maybe more, I of doing a Bluebird, more. a bit more. Believe it or not. And June's yeah. energy and <laughs> youth that's, that's just like a, a firecracker waiting to explode. You know, it's just like, I've got so much energy. So, so that, that brise volé oh, we just that, did, yeah. I mean, which that, he ex, you know, expertly executed, but is done in the finale when they're really exhausted absolutely. and all the adrenaline has sort of yeah. been going for a, a good... And he's just done the pas de deux into his solo yeah. and is desperate for a break in the wings. <laughs> and by the time he gets into the wings, she's already halfway through her solo. 
yeah. and he hasn't got enough breath back and he knows because I don't like 11 brise volleys. Because <laughs> it's, it's 12, so if it's 12, it's 12. So. You're starting that from the inception of rehearsal, so actually by the time he's at his debut, yeah. he's going to have always done 12 yeah. and have that extra kick for the yes. show. Yeah. But I was thinking about those attributes they both have, and they're both sort of quite basic Ashtonian yes. requirements, aren't they? Musicality yeah. is key, and actually, when it's very difficult, if you can use your musicality and your partner's musicality mm. to feed off each other, it helps so much. And the other it's banner in the works is, um, that of course, it's all a collaboration with an orchestra and a conductor. Of course. And certain evenings are slightly pacier. There's a cut. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it could, could be slower. Yeah. Which actually, if you're a jumper, is harder. Mm. Because you think, oh, great, you start off with energy. Oh, OK. And you get to the fourth one and you think, oh, I can yeah, the tanks. Are so different. again, your musicality, and actually that's when Yuffie's experience, not for his jump, but can come in because she'll know, okay, we've still got to be on the music, mm. whether it's slow or faster. So that's why musicality is so important. Yes. That the, no matter what tempo comes out of the orchestra pit, you can adjust to do it. And that's live theatre, isn't it? And I that's suppose live theatre. In a very edited world and filtered sort of content world um that's unusual i suppose so it's real artistry yes. to carry all the seeds you're giving them yeah. and then they step on the stage and it can be a very different tempo suddenly so it there's can. that but i think in coach when you're coaching i always it's very easy to blame grant isn't it grant <laughs> <laughs> oh you're too slow you're too fast and sometimes because we wake up in the mornings and we're all human and sometimes we have a day where we just walk slower we don't know <laughs> why and we don't even know we are yeah. you know, and the dancers and musicians we're all the same yeah so yes some days you go actually can I have it a bit quicker today that doesn't you know if it's really yeah. someone's really struggling but on the whole I would rather let the dancer adjust to the tempo of the pianist yes than you so okay. that they learn to do that because in the show you have to yeah and, you know, and as I just said, live performance and that sort of unedited, fresh in the moment, it will never quite be the same, be it about the energy, the tempo, the space, yeah. the, the And feel. also artists. Um, you know, musicians it, are artists, so yeah. you can't say, you know, do it that way. So, you know, you, it's a compromise. It's a... But I do think that's quite rare and unique in this day and age to still have that level of professional sort of spontaneity, isn't it, really? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's and, why it's so good. Here we are streaming this evening and everything's so accessible. Have you noticed in your sort of tenure and time a difference since dancers have had more easy access to visually watching and sort of worshipping fantastic dancers globally? Has that infiltrated your rehearsal process in any way that people have watched other stylistic fashions uh, along the way? Well, I, no, it sort of does directly and sometimes indirectly. I mean... For something like The Sleeping Beauty, there are so many versions out there, whether they're legal versions or illegal versions on YouTube. So it's very easy to watch one. And of course, we all have different preferences and one you like that might not be the one that we're doing mm. or it might be around the other way. Might, you know, so you have to, yes, you can look online and you can appreciate all the different versions, mm. but you've then got to come back to we're at the Royal Ballet. Yeah. So let's do the Royal Ballet version. I thought it was lovely that you're referencing like the voices you've heard in this house. And what's so precious about the Opera House and the Royal Ballet is that sort of lineage with these performances mm. and production. Yeah. And I try to, as much as I remember things from my early days in the company, I try to pass that on to the dancers when I'm rehearsing mm. you know, any of the ballets. But even Sleeping Beauty, you know, I've, I have sat and watched so many different Bluebirds and Princess Florines. And on your throne. On my throne, on my throne, <laughs> or waiting, or on stage yeah. as a court, you know, mm. court gent, or as a Rosa d'Arge prince. I've sort of and been there. What roles you've done in Beauty? Apart from Catalibut and Prince. So Florimont. there's room for debuts. Don't so there's. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to get into class for Prince Florimond. <laughs> um, what else were we going to? touch upon oh I wanted to ask you I was musing on this with this sort of production do you think in 50 years time it's a sort of double pronged answer do you think audiences will still want to be coming to this like wonderful ethereal fairyland world 
And do you think professional dancers are still going to want to be visiting the technical challenges of these solos in Pas de Deux? Yes, without a doubt. Okay. That's not even, I don't have to ponder and think. Yeah. Because it's so challenging. And, you know, Yuffie, Jun, mm. one is young and fresh, one is so experienced having done the role. I mean, mm. she did it literally her second year in the company. I think it was, wasn't it? it was which great. is very hard yeah. to do because you could get bored, but you can't get bored because there's always something new to do and learn. And as she says, she's had three years away from the role. Mm. She's had a child. So coming back for her is a completely different experience than when she first did it. She's still exploring it. Because, yeah, which is wonderful. So she can now explore it in a different way. Mm. So as an artist, you can still explore it differently. Yes. Technique is still incredibly hard to do because it's just pure classical technique. Mm. As an audience, the Sleeping Beauty must be up there with one of the sort of most recognised fairy tales. And it has room to be different in many different productions, which is very good. Mm. Doesn't have to stick rigidly. Look at all the different fairy tales in Act 3. You know, there are so many to choose from. There's a Cinderella and there's Tom Thumb, I think. And there are a number of different ones that, they, that can be used. So it can always change. And the designs can always change. You don't have to revisit the past always. There'll be future designs of the Sleeping Beauty that will appeal to newer audiences. Yeah. You know, it's... Reinventions. As a base, it's still a good ballet. And I think also just to go to the world of the wondrous and the ethereal and the fairy tale, perhaps, you know, the fact this opened the Opera House after the Second World War, maybe there's a parallel that just looking at the fact Cinderella currently is in the repertoire, these fairy tale stories that take us all away to these sort of other universes, perhaps that's needed culturally as an escapism thing, and it's lovely oh, we have these, these Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I love to think hard, and but I also love to just dream on <laughs> and to go to the theatre and just dream and forget everything mm. and just be taken away by the theatre itself. That's why with COVID it was so painful to not have yeah, live theatre because yeah. I think we need it. Of course. I could carry on talking to you for a lot longer but I'm being told <laughs> that there's more dancing coming for you all. So um, would you like to please join me and welcome some dancers from the Royal Ballet. We are now going to be watching Giacomo Rivera, Misha Bradbury and Hannah Grinnell. Welcome. <laughs> Evening, guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So am I right, this is a debut for all three of you coming up? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and as Chris knows all too well, often you prepare for a debut and it might come sooner than you think because of the nature of the volume of shows that are done if someone's ankle or something isn't right. So you're, you're getting ready for the, the opening night, really, aren't you? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe not quite opening night. Yeah. But How are rehearsals going? Good. We're, we're at the beginning. End of the <laughs> really. <laughs> this is our second, I think. So. Second rehearsal. Yes. OK. All right. Together. I don't think we've rehearsed. Not collectively. Have you, have you two rehearsed together? Sorry, should yeah. I hold that? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we've actually all rehearsed together, have we? I don't think you have. No. no. So you're getting a very brand new three. We're all getting a brand new. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's exciting. We're looking forward to watching. So I'll, I'll take these from you and let you get on. Thank you so much. OK, shall we go from the top? Perfect. So Grant, you could give us just the tail end of the polonaise. Would be lovely once they're ready. So yeah, let's start about there. No, because the king's throne, if I'm sitting on it. You'll have to be visible, yeah. OK, thanks, Grant. Let's just stop there. Let's just stop there. Very good, very good. Um, eye line. Don't look at your foot. It's there at the end of the leg. You don't need to see it. Yeah, literally think 
once you've taken, because at the beginning I thought, are they going to breathe? And the first thing you did was breathe. It was lovely. You all went <sighs> together. And I thought, oh, lovely. And then you did cabriole and you went, da, da, da. Don't look at your foot. Literally look there and then like a little rainbow, a flat rainbow, not a great big high one, up and over the horizon to there. And then again, and then you're going to go straight. So there can be a little bit of style as you close and squeeze uh, your upper legs into fifth. <laughs> yes, when you take that fifth. Hang on, relax. <laughs> relax. So that's both sides. Now, when you do um, this little gallop and tonneve and gallop, make sure that back leg closes into fifth. Yes. Don't over travel because you want to keep your formation and you'll be slightly upstage of the two ladies. So keep it tight, because the lady that's not doing the pirouette doesn't want miles to go. Yes, you also, and she also, if she's miles away here, doesn't want to have to be on this angle. It's nice if you're on that angle, and you do a, quite a sharp. Where we've done a flat eye line, you now do quite an acute up and back. Then you, that's it. Because grand jeté and tourne on, you don't want to do sideways. So, Go up there, but they're close together, so then you can turn and step for your attitude there. Now, ladies, double pirouette you can do on your own. Do not paddle a double. You can assist, and you go with her in case something goes wrong, but you shouldn't need to do anything. But what you've got to do is you've got to stop her at the end. Turn, turn, go. Turn, turn, stop. Yes. So literally feel the waist and then... <clears throat> so that she knows she can just go position and she'll be in the right place. Should we try that again? Excellent. <clears throat> now, ultimately, you have no real story. So this is just dance. This is the love of classical ballet and dancing. Yeah? So from your head to your toes, enjoy it. Here we go. The same place. We'll do the same place. Yeah. And... And don't know, Giacomo. That's it. Fifth and go. Da -da -da. And fifth and up and up and boy. That's it. Misha up and go. No, no floor. And up and fifth and go. No, and up and fifth and up and up. Turn, turn. Okay, stop there. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And I only know because I've been there thousands of years ago. Why do we want to do that? I have no idea. So really, at the early stage, be aware. Yeah. Yes, because the, the audience want to see that. They don't want to see that. Yes, just there. And it's not just the eye line, it's the body. And we do it because you're told, use your body. But you don't have to use your body down there. You can use it that way and there. And the body goes, and then it goes straight. And really, tombe, pada, bo, mm, squeeze, yes. That's a real juicy mm, to it. Yes, Hannah. Uh, let's do this next bit, and then we'll put them both together. So just eight in, and. Seven, go and up and up, plie extend and up. Leave your heads now, leave the heads up, up, plie down, leave the head good, better and up. Okay, stop there, stop there. This is one of the harder steps. Yeah, now you've got to be pure with the port de bras, so you've all got to go grand town torn on. Land in second. But what I don't want to see is, ja, da, da. yes, because that's too robotic. So breathe up, they will come down. Now, just going into that, you've also got to leave your head. So to the first one's easy, because you can leave it to the audience. Then you've got to lead it to where you've just come from. So leave the head, like you're taught when you first learn Grand Jeté en Tournon, here. Now leave it a bit there. You're going to go PK, attitude, 
half a turn on point or demi point, plie, extend arabesque. Now leave the head and then up and land and up, down go and up. We didn't leave the head. <laughs> From there, yes. Do you remember those days at school and you go to the corner and you go grand jeté en tournant? If you went, the teacher would go, no, Hannah, leave your head. Leave the head. Yes? It also, not only does it make you do the right preparation, but it stops my bugbear. And you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Yeah. Is this. What's that? OK. I have no idea. Yeah, so let's do the same thing. Eight into going around. Now, who, Hannah, you're leading. Make uh, like a sausage shape or a cigar shape. So you want to go back or then almost straight, right the way over here, then curve, and then right this way. That enables Misha, for the very last one, to join you there. Yep. So don't make it too far upstage and circular. We all think it's a circle, but it's actually not. It's more of a squashed circle. <laughs> a cigar. Uh, eight in. Thanks, Grant. And... Go and up. Oh, where's the head? Okay. So uh, now, Hannah, that's the cheat, which I have seen. And when I get a few more rehearsals with other casts, I will rectify. Once you've done, you should do a turn. This one for you is coming around. Of course, you don't want the entrecé to be there. So the entrecé is coming around. But don't suddenly cut. I'll stand here, and you can go around me, because I'm wide enough that it will be a nice curve. <clears throat> Same thing. And who didn't leave the head? <laughs> Just checking, Giacomo was going to say me, but you did. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Eight in, and... That's it, good. And breathe, dance, and up. Ooh, that's close for comfort. OK, right. OK, stop there. So now you can see actually when you can, re you can almost travel a bit further to start with, so it's freer, so it's not so restricted. Because it's one of those steps that feels really restricted. But actually, if you do the right floor pattern, then you can move on. And actually, that helps you. Because then you'll just get there in time to land here before you do the last attitude front. Yeah. The ch so the head is better, the arms in second are better. Now this half a turn in attitude has disappeared. PK, pirouette, plie. Very nice. Just quicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the hard thing is that you've got to go up, plie, go. It's really fast. So you've got to put a bit of energy in that arm. Yes, Misha, that's better. Yeah, and what's nice as well is if you do that, it becomes an attitude and half a turn rather than Batman attitude, which looks very odd. And then it goes, duh, arabesque, and suddenly, ah, oh, Hannah, excellent. Yeah? Just, yeah. Just keep our lead and you follow. So should we there? Now, follow me. Just keep following me. Yeah. Just imagine someone's ahead of you okay. and that you're following them on the shape you need rather than Try. saying, follow me, because it'll be easier. Uh, we'll, go, we'll do all that section again. We'll put it together in a minute. Let's give us a lead into going upstage. Eight before. So you've done your cigar shape. Now, you don't want to be too separate from each other. So go in and take the middle red and middle red. That's it. Yep. So here's eight in. And three, four, five, 
six, and up. Down. Oh, Giacomo and Misha leave the head. <laughs> Hannah did. <laughs> hey, yes. All the audience are there. Let us see you. Otherwise, you can't help. But you this position, yes, it's a la seconde, here. And then you go up. Yep. Once again, please grant, and yes, comes down the front. Yes, thank you. And again. And again, for good luck. Now dance. Uh, not on the floor though, Hannah. Yes. <laughs> ah. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? But we like to see your face. And if your face is smiling, even if something goes a bit strange down below, we won't see it. Because if someone's looking at you smiling, you're going to look at them. You're not going to go, yes, lovely Misha. Yeah? So let us see that face as much as you can. Uh, now, when we do these tombe, it can be bigger than the length of your leg. Go beyond, up, up, and squeeze. Jump, da, da, da. Really get that second leg chasing it. Jump, ba, ba, and beyond your legs. Yeah, don't teeter over. Same place. Thanks, Grant, and... Here we go. Down and up. Keep the arm second, Giacomo, now. Yes, that's it, good. Go up. Now, no floor work. And squeeze. Body and squeeze and uh, go up and front, down up <laughs> and front, down up and front, ladies go and let's just stop there, <laughs> yeah, now this has to be just pure with the legs technically. So you're going to that back leg, but this knee has to be turned out. And the body is over to the back. We're then going straight up, and the head is in the arm. We're then really tombaying. Yes, and that back foot does point, but it doesn't whack up to arabesque. It's just going as far because you've really tombayed. If you don't really tombe, we get a batmon in there, and there's no batmon. Tombe. Now, that's it. Now, Sutanu is front in one count so we don't bore a front, yes, better, and a front, that's better. If you take two counts for the soutenu, we get the back of your head, which is not as nice. So really, literally spot. Find somewhere and spot. Spot. Now, you're spotting, but you're slightly slow with the body. So use that to give you a little bit of force to get around. And it's not a bore, ladies, it's a soutenu. Ah, that's more like it. That's fifth to fifth. We sort of now do pencil turns and stick that one down the front. And it's, thank you. Yes. Let's, Grant, have you got? The last one. No, I'd like to do all of those. Tombe, perfect. Yeah, that little tombe pardabore fifth, tombe pardabore fifth would be lovely. And here we go. And tombe pardabore, squeeze tombe. Don't look on the floor, Giacomo. And uh, go up, tombe and front. Hold breath. Better, Misha. Don't bore. Okay, just stop there. Hannah. Do tombe releve and jump. Yes. Now you've got to take your weight there. So if it's, it can't be too far back here. So here's got to be central. The body goes. Now, if you do up and over with the body, yes, that's it. 
Absolutely. Go on. Yes. Look how far you're traveling. That's a real zigzag. And then what happens is, that's what it is. So if you do zig, zag, Giacomo will be down here, perfectly placed for his little solo, which is what we want. You two ladies won't still be up there and have miles to run off, going, <laughs> yeah. And, it ha and it, we also then go, oh, that's a nice step. It's moving. It looks dancey. Otherwise, it becomes so tight and restricted. Yeah, should we try that one again? Yes. Da da di da di da 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 da. Does that answer your? So the first one is on the music and front. Da di da 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 di da. I've never counted that, even though it has eight in. I've just done it on the music, or but is that all right? Thank you, Grant. And. Completely different, good ladies and gentlemen. Go, zigzag forward. And up, and go, and go on, Misha. Right to the end of that leg, go on. Yes, you can do it. There you go. Okay. Okay, let's just stop there. I want you to do that because we call that the Florestan step. So I thought you had to do the Florestan step. Okay, pretty good. Uh, when you do the Florison step, plie, yeah. plie, because we do it in Cinderella yeah. at the moment. Yeah, plie. Da. But that should travel forward. The very first one, travel forward, go straight up. That's the, and the step is the real travel. Yeah. To just a little bit. Now step forward. Now stay where you are and step forward. That's it. Da, jump. There you go. And also think of that leg, then go not bat mon arabesque. A little up and over. Breathe, breathe, yeah, and the arms will help. Yeah. Dancers always practice with arms here. <laughs> right, take a moment, have a breather. Let's try and put as much as that, of that together, yeah. So we're going slower because they are all new. And there's no point in rushing through and running the whole thing for you tonight and solos and coda when there's too much information for you to absorb and get into the bodies. Yeah? And it'll take the next few weeks to sink in. So have a moment. Recap the corrections. And then we'll see if we can place a couple of those sections together. And this is deceptively puffy and hard, isn't it? Something that you think is so simple is actually not. It's really tricky, which is often the way. Would you like me to stand here, Hannah? No. Are you sure? I'll, I'll watch. I'll get a nice, comfortable chair and watch. So, Grant, if we could go back to the top, please. Are you ready? You all right? Yeah. Okay. And Okay, I am just going to stop because I know you're trying so hard, but it's not in your body. Now, it's actually less, a lot less than you think. The breath don't over show that you're taking a breath by doing a big head. Because it's not about that. It's about that. It's just a, a literally fill those lungs with air. And then the body will move out of it. So you'll do an up and over, but the head doesn't have to actually break. It's less. Now this is like... You're a little kid dancing. Yes. Oh, isn't that good? It's that freedom 
that once you learn the technique disappears because it all becomes, I've got to do the right arm. So you've got to keep that freedom to make us believe it's really easy. And actually, you'll enjoy it more. Because if you're breathing, you'll have the energy. Your legs and arms won't get tired. So really allow the breath and the body to help the legs. Yeah? And it's simpler. It's just one side to the other. Yeah? Once again, I won't say anything this time. I'll let you go all the way through. <clears throat> Thanks, Grant. And. Just a nice breath. Fill those lungs with air. Yes. And again. And go. Use the music. One side to the other. And go and over the top. That's it. Better. Together. Breathe together. Music. Go with Grant. That's it. Faster and out and up and up down and out and up and up plie down out and up. Here we go now. Really breathe here. Let us see your faces up. Good. Easy. Use the plie up. Now this is your rest and squeeze. Tombe and a squeeze. Be a team. Go. And front. Up. Down. That's a good one. That was better, that step. Good. Okay. Good, good, good. That was better. That's coming. <laughs> you know, also at the end of the day, you're a team. So be together, feed off each other, breathe together. The music's coming from over there today. So breathe and go with it. Now, if it's slow, we don't all have the biggest jump on the planet. So you go back and you go, this is so oh, slow. See, I've just done it without jumping. But I didn't collapse. I mean, I looked old, but I didn't collapse. Yeah? So, you have to be clever and think, well, I, there's no way I'm going to jump and stay in the air that amount of time, because I'm just going to go, oh, gosh, and it hurts. So you sort of delay it. You leave the head there, and you sort of make it a slow motion, because you're lucky on that step that they don't see it sideways on. So they don't see the height of that leg, especially you ladies with the tutu. In fact, they most probably can't even see the back leg. So you've got to think, OK, oh, this is really slow today or I'm really tired today, and then you can use that in the right way to help. And as long as you do the right technique by landing on your leg, you can hold it. The orchestra could all leave and come back five minutes later, and you could still be there, because you're in the right place. OK? The best step was the last zigzag, because you actually all relax more. Or you were tired, and you thought, I've got to push, because it's near the end of the day. Yeah, but you all were more together. Let's just try that horrible step going up stage, and we'll finish on that step. Do it with the music. Yes. And if you're all with the music, you'll all be with each other. Just in. Thanks, Grant. And. This is your last push. Listen to Grant. Okay, good, good, good. Well, the last tombe pas de bray was perfect because it was three peas in a pod. Yeah, but that's what you've got to do. Listen to that music, phrase it the same way. Don't, if you're doing a solo, yes, you can be on your leg and you can go, I'll just hold that one and I'll catch up. You can't. So when your solos come, if that happens within reason, that's fine. Yeah, but you've got to be just textbook. 
and dance. So much better, yeah? But that's, let that go in, and then all, gradually all those, don't look at your toes, look out the front, you won't even remember it, unless you hear my voice going, ah, look out. Okay, so well done, thank you very much. Thank you, Grant. <laughs> very good. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, sadly, that is all we have time for this evening. Um, but I think we owe a big thanks to all the dancers, to Chris and to Grant for all their hard work this evening. Thank you. <laughs> the Sleeping Beauty opens on the main stage here at the Royal Opera House on the 6th of May, and you can purchase tickets via the website. You can also watch it streaming live to a cinema near you on the 24th of May and an encore performance on the 28th. To our audiences here in the Claw studio and to all of those watching around the world at home, we hope you've enjoyed tonight's Insight, sponsored by Rolex. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>